My name is Pam Vaka, and I'm going to talk about the basic principles of the Arrowhead Framework. The Arrowhead Framework is built on a system of systems principles, and uh, it features interoperability, integrability, and independence. Uh, which I will discuss a little bit further later on. And uh, for example, the interoperability uh, can be reached by addressing the service-oriented architecture approach, which is a very nice uh, feature of Arrowhead. Also, a uh, very interesting feature of Arrowhead is the local automation clouds, which the Arrowhead uh, framework has introduced. And uh, it is also possible to have communication between these uh, local clouds to multi-clouds on the edge, on the platform, or even the enterprise level. To address integrability, Arrowhead introduces various maturity levels, namely three. Hardware adapters and software adapters can uh, help you in reaching Arrowhead compatibility. The presentation is going to talk about the mandatory and so supporting core systems of Arrowhead, as well as collaborations with other Eclipse projects. Now to get, get uh, Arrowhead into the perspective of other similar IoT or system of system architectures and platforms. In this picture, you could see the comparison of Arrowhead with Autosar, with Basics, Fiverr, IoTVT, Lightweight Machine to Machine, LWM to M, or OCF platforms or architectures. And you can see that uh, the specifics of Arrowhead is really that it is based on the service oriented architectures and local automation clouds. It is real time. It has various runtime features such as dynamic orchestration, authorization monitoring, or automation. It is a distributed platform rather than all the others which are centralized. It is an open source uh, platform. It has high resource accessibility, supported by the Arrowhead Consortia and uh, uh, related partners, which are over 300 by now. The message patterns related to the protocol dialogues could be either request response or pub publish subscribe. It uh, can be used through any type of transport protocol and practically any type of communication protocols. These are only uh, examples of those uh, because it can adapt to any third party legacy systems. It has a, a naturally built in authentication, authorization and accounting. And uh, it, based on, it is based on uh, standardization features of other standards. Three main principles of Arrowhead are these. The system of systems uh, of Arrowhead for industrial IoT and cyber physical systems is really reached by, so the system of system architecture is really reached by interoperability and integrability and independence of, e of these systems within the system of systems. Interoperability is achieved through the service-oriented architecture for which the three main uh, pillars are late binding, loose coupling, and lookup, basically meaning that the uh, consumers and the providers of these services, the services are the information exchange, so the information exchange providers or consumers are not uh, bound or coupled design time, no, not even deployment time, but they can be dynamically uh, combined, dynamically uh, communicating uh, to each other through this lane binding or loose coupling, and they found each other through the lookup feature of Arrowhead. It, 
there is an easy integration between legacy and new native Arrowhead systems through the integrability feature. So if you have a 10 year old or 20 year old equipment, uh, it can be still made Arrowhead compliant through hardware or software adapters. And Arrowhead is independent from underlying technologies. Uh, any services can be done with various technologies and it is independent from application protocols. You can use any protocols and you can translate between them or Arrowhead provides uh, automatic translation between them. Where, while uh, the IoT world, the Internet of Things world, uh, usually works with the global clouds where everybody sends their data up to and it gets uh, uh, analyzed there, Arrowhead has this uh, special feature of local automation clouds where uh, the geographically or security wise closed systems. So those systems that are either geographically close to each other or they have the same uh, security context or they require similar engineering, they can get into a local cloud which has the same core systems of Arrowhead and uh, then these local clouds can be communicating uh, with each other, they can exchange services, the application systems of one cloud can get another service from another cloud through inter-cloud service exchange. So based on these local automation clouds uh, principle, Arrowhead achieves real-time operation, it achieves high levels of security, and the engineering complexity is really reduced. How this system of systems uh, uh, approach is addressed in here on the left hand side, you can see the mandatory core systems of Arrowhead, namely the service registry, where service providers practically register themselves, the orchestrator, where the service consumers ask for orchestration, ask for uh, matchmaking for a given service provider, and authorization and other security uh, features related core system. So these are mandatory for each uh, local cloud and various application systems that could be service providers or service consumers or both uh, belong to this uh, local cloud and the services as shown are laid bound, loosely coupled and the lookup feature of the orchestrator uh, provides the service oriented architecture feeling. On the right hand side there are a few supporting core systems, there are many more in Arrowhead, many more but these are uh, some distinguished ones. So in order for you not to have to develop your own event handlers or translators or gatekeepers and gateways between the local clouds or QS management or things like that, you can use the Arrowhead provided supporting systems which are available or you can of course develop your own and you can use that but Arrowhead has uh, some of these systems and services already available for those who want to use it. For example, for workflow choreography, uh, if uh, you have a production workflow, you can use the workflow choreographer and the executor to help you through that workflow step by step, uh, dynamically your system of systems, your uh, equipment in the production area can work with these features. One very key idea is the orchestration, finding a fitting provider for service consumer and how it works is like the application system on the bottom as a consumer asks the orchestrator uh, to show a proper provider of this service which it checks the orchestration store, checks the service registry if there are a proper one in there, uh, looks for authorization possibilities with that uh, provider, 
and checks whether the QoS towards that provider is satisfactory for this consumer. And if a provider can be chosen in this local cloud, then uh, the orchestrator sets up uh, the communication for this consumer and the provider, and they then uh, communicate between uh, each other directly, or uh, the orchestrator can reach out for an external trusted other local cloud to the gatekeeper or other clouds and look for uh, service providers in there in uh, procedures called uh, global service discovery or uh, intercloud negotiations. And this thing can be abstracted to other levels, like not only the production floor level, the edge level, where sensors and actuators uh, are connected to each other with data distributors and algorithms and uh, human machine interfaces, but uh, they can, their data can get into the IoT platform level where stream processing happens or business intelligent dashboard shows the data or the data gets into the data lake and then batch processing happens there. And even so further up there in the industry 4.0 uh, architecture, you can reach the enterprise level, so this data can reach the enterprise resource planning or the logistics planning systems. Maturity levels of Arrowhead are defined for uh, integrability reasons. So we have the maturity level, the highest level of maturity is maturity level 3, uh, where the native Arrowhead systems are uh, can be found. If your system can be made Arrowhead compliant through a software adapter, we call that maturity level two. Or if your system can be compliant to Arrowhead through a hardware adapter, we call that maturity level one. And of course, in the Arrowhead infrastructure, there are various software and hardware adapters available for various protocols and system types. This is an example of uh, one of such local clouds where uh, uh, various management systems, the core systems, dashboards, algorithms, and uh, sensors and actuators can be found and they can be orchestrated together or can they work uh, towards a common goal to the workflow choreography. The supporting core system features are many, but some of these are the translator that allows protocol translation between various application systems, the onboarding controller that handles the new devices coming and onboarding to the local cloud with the support of system registry and device registry, or the choreographer that manages the workflows and executes recipes in a dynamic manner so the next step is executed depending on the service provider availability or the plan description uh, which provides up-to-date information on the engineering plant or we have the event handler, the QS manager, certificate authority and so on. And we don't only have supporting core systems within Arrowhead but uh, we have outside Arrowhead as well. These are listed in here. Uh, those are the released one, the release candidates and the prototypes and the version 413. Actually, uh, Arrowhead is now version 4.2 um, and we are working on version 5 now. So we, uh, we are extending the system and service uh, listings in here. And as well as internal to the end, uh, Arrowhead, we have external systems and projects which we interact with. We have already active interaction with uh, the project on the left hand side for Dayak, Vorto, Hogbit, Ditto, Eclipse Ono, Eclipse Paho, Mosquito, or Kuxa. These are all Eclipse projects, as you know, and probably worked with. And uh, on the right hand side, uh, we have collaboration with involved partners that uh, and the Arrowhead Consortia 
we have partners that has worked with or developing the Eclipse Capua, Kura, Lishan, Wakama, Keti, or others like Milo, Unide, OM2N basis, and a lot of others. So we are really expanding our collaboration with Eclipse projects. So thank you very much. In brief, this was the Arrowhead framework summary and uh, hope we can work together in the near future. This was a brief introduction to the Arrowhead framework. Thank you for your attention.